specific heat capacity. All right, so in studying thermal energy and the transfer of thermal energy from one substance to another, it's going to um, lead you on the path of basically that transfer of energy, which is known as heat, is going to be different depending on, on the substances that you are considering. And that difference, okay, will depend on how much of that substance you have and then what exactly is the substance that you are considering. Um, now, specific heat capacity is related to that, what is it? What type of substance are you talking about? So if you take a particular substance, water, aluminum, iron, okay, or any other ones, we can do a test to try to see if you take that substance, how much energy would be needed in order to increase one kilogram of that substance by one degree Celsius. And that is referred to as the specific heat capacity. So if you have some particular item, okay, and a substance, what you want to be able to know is how much energy are you going to have to input into this? So how much energy are you going to have to input this? And when you're talking about the energy of that internal energy of changing the actual thermal energy of that item, then you are referring to this transfer okay, of this energy as heat. That heat Okay, we designate with Q. And this is exactly what you see here in this formula. And now the amount of energy which is needed, so this energy that's going to be transferred into that object, so that energy which is being transferred through heat, is going to be, okay, with regards to the increase of on one kilogram, so imagine that you had one kilogram of that item, and you want it to be able to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. Now, that amount of energy, okay, so that heat is actually, okay, known as the specific heat capacity. That's what that would be. Now, notice in this formula, we do have the mass of the object or of the substance. And we want to be able to increase or we want to be able to see what the temperature change would be. And this C that you see within here, so within this formula, is known as that specific heat capacity. And it is referring to this. For every one kilogram, if you're going to be increasing the temperature by one degree or dropping it by one degree, okay, then you're referring to the specific heat capacity. Now, many different items are going to have a different amount for this. And this is purely done by experimentation. Now, you can look this up. So if you, for example, so here is, okay, if I have gone on, so this is actually from the website, which is the Engineering Toolbox, which is a pretty cool website. And I search out specific heat capacities. So here is a table of numerous specific heat capacities. Now, some of these you may not know, but for example, something like air, right, which is the third one, notice what it says there. It says it's 1,000, okay, five. So what that means is you would need 1,005 joules for every one kilogram of air to be able to increase its temperature by one degree Celsius. And you can go on there and you're noticing that, for example, aluminum, right, which is 897. So you don't need that much energy to be able to take aluminum and aluminum as you have it. So a little bit more of a conductor. Okay, and that aluminum you can see, okay, so what's going to happen? How much energy are you going to have in there? Now, I'm going to just to show you, I'm going to kind of rearrange these right from the smallest, right? Notice that uranium, gold, lead, right? Platinum, tungsten, okay, so all of these that you have there, notice how little energy you would need in order to take one kilogram of that. So if you took one kilogram of gold, you would only need 129 joules to increase its temperature 
by one degree Celsius. So it's a very good conductor, obviously, and so are some of the other ones that you have in there. And we would want to be able to use these things as conductors as well. Now, it doesn't make sense for us to use it because it would be very expensive to use gold, right? For example, for our pot or pans as we're cooking. So we want to be able to use something which is a little bit, you know, less expensive. But as you can see here, you know, there's a lot of metals in here, okay, as you're going through here. So even copper, okay, zinc. So notice that they're very low on the item list. Now, if I swap this, okay, and I now rearrange this from the highest, notice hydrogen, 14,000, so, so much more, right? Helium, ammonia, okay? Notice even water, right? Water is all the way up to, it's about 4,180. Now that tells us something, okay? What that means is that we need a lot of energy to be able to increase its temperature by one degree. And now for all of these, as you're going through here, this actually tells us that we can calculate so all of those items that you just seen on the list, those are done by experimentation. And now what we do is if we wanted to be able to use this formula, so for example, if we wanted to talk about water, so if you take water and, you know, for instance, that we typically assume, okay, in water, that approximately one milliliter of water is equal to one gram, which means, okay, that if you take this one milliliter, that means 1,000 okay, milliliters, which would be one liter. So 1,000 milliliters, which is just one liter, typically equals to one kilogram. So if you take, for instance, a, just a cup of coffee and you wanted to boil the water for a cup of coffee, and let's imagine that that cup of coffee is maybe, you know, 250 milliliters, okay? Or maybe more just depends on what cup you're doing. And you want it to be able to boil this, right? So from, let's say, some temperature okay, that you have, let's say maybe it was at room temperature, okay, maybe at 21 degrees Celsius. And you want to be able to bring this up all the way down, okay, you know, let's say to you know, 99 degrees Celsius, you know, 100 degrees Celsius, we're going to be boiling the water already, but I'll just put it at 99. And now you want to ask the question, how much energy would you need in order to do this? So that, in terms of trying to find out, that would be asking how much heat would you have to transfer? Now, of course, that transfer is gonna you know, go over, okay? So it's gonna turn from electrical energy and it's gonna turn into your thermal energy, but you can find this out to see how much of that energy it would be. So now if you take this, if you want to find this out, you would say, okay, well, then what is the mass that I am referring to? I'm going to have to multiply it by the specific heat capacity. So this will depend on, okay, how susceptible, you know, how conductive, okay, it is, okay, in terms of water um, to increase by just one degree. And you want to ask yourself, okay, what is the change in temperature? So now this mass, well, if you have 250 milliliters, and I just told you that one milliliter is approximately one gram, we can assume that for water. So this would be 250 grams. Now 250 grams, we have to change to SI units. This is gonna be 0 0.25 kilograms. So don't forget your mass in SI is gonna be in kilograms, and that's what it is in the formula. Now we need to know, okay, what this is, which is the specific heat capacity. So we just actually looked it up in that table and that table tells us that it's approximately 4,180 joules, okay? So that's how many joules, okay, you're going to get. And this is for every one kilogram for every degree Celsius that you change. And this is important. So your specific heat capacity, it has very unique units. It is joules per every kilogram if you want to raise it by one degree Celsius. And now finally, you would have to change, okay, and see what that change in temperature is. And this you can certainly do. But this is what the change in temperature would have been. So 99 minus 21. So this is your final temperature minus your initial temperature. That's what this delta means. And you've seen this delta over and over in kinematics, right? later on in dynamics or so in forces, okay, you see that. 
So that is the change in temperature that you would have. So this would have been, I guess, 78 degrees Celsius in terms of change. So now if I go back into the formula, I can plug this in, 78 degrees Celsius. And now you can find out how much energy that would be. Notice that now your kilogram would cancel with the kilogram. Your degree Celsius will cancel with the degree Celsius. And all you have left is joules, which is the SI unit for heat transfer. So that's how much you would have to transfer. So now if we take this up, this would be 0 0.25 times 4180. Okay. Sometimes it will change, you know, 4181, 82. Okay. You'll just have to see what, what the table says or what your teachers use, but it is done through experimentation. And this will be multiplied by, now I wanted to change this by 78. So now as I hit equals, this is going to tell me that, oh, wow, I'm going to need 81,510 joules of energy to be able to you know, get this cup of water to boil, okay, to get it all the way up to 99. If you want it to go on 100, you know, you can chain, make the change in temperature, you know, 70, okay, that would have been a little bit more, okay, it would have been 70, I guess, nine degrees, okay, at that time. So this, okay, just tells us, and it gives us a very nice equation. This equation is done through experimentation to show us how much energy, so how much thermal energy we would need to transfer, which is basically heat, okay, for any mass and any substance that we are dealing with. And different substances will have different specific heat capacities because of the fact, okay, that they have different bonds internally and different amount of energy that would be needed, okay, to increase the kinetic energies of those substances. And because the temperature change Okay, is proportional to the fact of the fact the having the thermal energy in there. Okay, you can see that this formula nicely captures that particular heat transfer. So this is just one example within here. And all I really wanted to do is not so much the example, though I think it's worthwhile to see this in action, but just to let you know what specific heat capacity is. All right. So it is a constant which is derived from experiments that we would see on whatever substances that we want to be able to deal with. And it will be different for different substances. And if you want the total energy transfer, meaning the heat for any mass, for any object, and you want to see how much of a temperature change it would be, then you can utilize this formula in order to find it. So this formula will tell you, as long as you substitute your mass, keep it in standard units, as long as you substitute your specific heat capacity, you have to look that up in a table, and as long as you substitute your delta T. Now, in various experiments, we sometimes, we can find out how much of this energy has been transferred. We may know the actual mass, we may know what the temperature change has been, and then we can actually find out what the C is. So you can manipulate this formula for any unknown that you like, depending on the givens that have been provided to you. Now, please remember that if the temperature changes, if it goes from a lower temperature to a higher temperature, so the object, the substance getting warmer, then the amount of energy transfer will be positive, And that means that it is absorbing energy, right? So if Q is positive, that means it's absorbing energy. Okay, so that's something that you may want to think about. So if Q is positive, then this is the absorption. So it is absorbing okay, the energy. If Q on the other hand is negative, right? So when the temperature is dropping, so for that case, if it is negative, then it is not absorbing energy, but it is releasing energy. So it will release energy to another substance or to the air, to the surroundings around it. So you have two things. You can absorb energy or you can release energy. And that depends if your temperature is going up, that's absorption. If the temperature is going down, that is the release of that energy. And that should make sense to you from the law of conservation.
right? So if you're, if you're going to have less thermal energy, it must have gone somewhere. So it must have been released and it probably has changed to something else, possibly still thermal energy or something else that it has been used for. All right. Okay. So with this, that's all I wanted to convey in this particular video. I think it's worthwhile for you, okay, as a student to be able to know what this specific heat capacity is. I would encourage you to look up on the internet. So for example, like the engineering toolbox to see the various okay, specific heat capacities for items or sometimes if you have it in a textbook or some, something else, maybe a table your teacher gives you, just take a peek okay, and look and see you know, how much energy would you actually need for that substance. Don't forget that it will depend on how much of that substance you have, hence the mass in the formula. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in future videos. Happy uh, physics studying. Bye, everybody.